Hi, this video is a part of Deep Learning with TensorFlow playlist. In this playlist, I quickly explain the logic and implementation of deep learning algorithms and application using TensorFlow. Note that I do not code along, rather I make use of pen for explaining the tricky parts of code so that you people can read the notebooks and re-implement these algorithms yourself. Code files for each video will be given in the description. So I'm expecting my audience to be well aware of deep learning algorithms and I'll be just implementing them using TensorFlow. And I'm expecting that you people just need hints for these implementations. In this video, I'll talk about imbalanced X-ray image classification using transfer learning. And finally, we will also visualize the CNN using gradient classification activation maps, grad camps. Now let's understand this idea of CNN, transfer learning, class imbalance, and finally grad, grad camps on whiteboard and then code them all in the notebook. Okay, so we'll begin with our regular neural network. Just I'll review it. So we have input layers, hidden layers, we have output. They are, are they all are very densely connected. That's why these layers are also called dense layers. Once we have output, we compute the error and then we uh, just backpropagate all the error for each of the layer weights using gradient descent backpropagation algorithm. And in TensorFlow, these gradients are calculated automatically. Uh, and going forward, uh, I mean, cal calculating this linear combination of previous layer and the weights, and then calculating this activation after uh, after applying this activation function, uh, calculating this output uh, is what is done in in feed forward for each of the layer, and in backward we just uh, adjust these weights. This is done in regular neural network. So let's jump to CNN. In CNN, what we do is we make use of this special image structure where to calculate, uh, to understand this pixel, this blue pixel, the surrounding pixel also uh, takes role. In dense neural network, uh, this structure is not well captured. However, in CNN, this structure is captured using convolutions and pooling layers. Now, what are do, what are these layers? I'm expecting that you know about it. If you don't, just go have a look at it, how they work. Uh, but in neural networks, there is no difference in CNN uh, or uh, our regular neural network because we have to just apply these these functions of dense or con or pool. Uh, we just have to understand the parameters. Uh, this I'm not I'm not uh, saying that you should not know it because TensorFlow uh, allow us to do things very easily. But still, uh, for application purpose, you just need to know uh, at least intuitive. You just have, must you must have under, uh, intuitive understanding of these convolutions if you don't know the mathematics it's okay you can just go away with it okay then come to tensorflow uh, in tensorflow we define the architecture for our neural network uh, for example uh, one way of that is we have to say that we have input layer then convolutional layer then pooling then convolutional then pooling then dense then dense so this is what we call architecture of a neural network so input layer just uh, the output of input input layer goes to this con layer after after uh, operation in this in this con layer what we do is uh, we output this con layer uh, the output of this con layer will be in input for this pooling layer then output of this pooling layer will be input for this next con layer and this happens so every previous layer is kind of uh, playing a role of input to the uh, next layer the same thing could be done with functional api which is giving us more control so if we what we do is the same architecture can be written in this form where we are applying the convolutional layer giving input and this the output of this convolutional layer is stored in this out variable and then what we do is uh, then we uh, apply pooling layer uh, on the output of this previous con layer which is stored in this out again the output of pooling layer is stored in this again out variable this out variable is uh, used again and again and then we again apply the con layer store it in out we again apply this pooling layer and uh, store this output and then again we apply this dense layer so this is how it works okay this functional api is much better because it gives us more control now let's come to the imbalance problem uh, what is imbalance problem consider this positive these positive classes to be positive uh, these red uh, lines uh, are frequencies for positive class in in different uh, labels so these are different labels uh, suppose we are doing multi class classification so we have examples in our training set uh, positive examples of our training set much greater than negative examples these black shows negative so this shows the imbalance in imbalance in positive and negative classes so we have more positive classes than negative classes so then what what it will do is that it will be having a great impact on the cross entropy and in our loss function that we will be using we, we are using cross entropy loss function because we are doing uh, this class this is because of a classification problem and i hope so you know about this loss function but nevertheless i'm just gonna write it out so this is the loss function minus y i log of uh, f of x i one minus y i log of one minus f of x i okay for intuitive understanding, if you know about this log function and all the derivations, so you would also know this that this yi is actually, if we do it for all the data, this is for one sample because i represent the ith sample. So if you do it for all the data, then this y term is actually sum for all the positive examples. 
and this 1 minus y is actually uh, sum for all the negative examples f of x i is actually prediction for i sample so looking at this formula what what it shows is that suppose if we have a class imbalance problem and we are having greater frequency for positive classes so we have greater frequency for positive classes then what will happen is that the loss will focus on these positive examples and it will most of the time adjust weights based on the error uh, that are generated because of these positive classes. Why? Because we have a lot of examples of positive classes. The frequency of positive classes are greater. Then loss will be dominated by a positive class, basically, positive all the positive examples. And if we have a greater frequency of negative class, then the loss will be dominated by this negative example. Okay, let's come to the solution for this class imbalance problem. What we'll do is we'll compute weight. And what will be the weight? The weight will actually uh, be the frequency of the other class. So if you want to find out the weight for positive class, then the frequency of negative class will become the positive class weight. And the frequency of positive class will become the weight for the negative class. Okay, look, look at it. How much intuitive it is? Suppose we both have 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 frequency. Both have equal frequencies. So they both will be having equal weight and uh, the effect will cancel out. However, if the frequency of negative class is 0 0.5, so we will give 0 0.9 weightage to the positive class so that a uh, class imbalance problem gets solved so this is just for visualization purpose that i'll be using we'll be just multiplying this frequency with the weight and we'll find out that they both become same after uh, multiplying it so we will look at the effect of these weights uh, once we compute this simple calculation or once we do this simple calculation uh, this is just for confirmation that our idea actually worked uh, i'll be using that and i'll be showing you that okay finally uh, these weights will be used to calculate uh, weighted cross entropy uh, where we are multiplying the weight positive weight here and the negative weight here with the negative examples now let's come to the idea of transfer learning I have already talked about it in, in, in previous videos where we have input and we have pre-trained uh, architecture and in this case we will be using dense net, net. These architectures are very huge, uh, uh, huge and deep networks uh, which were trained on very large data set. So these architectures have basically uh, captured the patterns and what we could say these special kind of representations that we, will, we could use instead of our raw data so we give input and uh, that input is uh, is feed forwarded in this dense net and once we get the output after this dense net we use this output as an input for our own neural network uh, and we receive this final output and then we adjust the weight only of our own neural network and it is also possible that we adjust the weights of dense net in that case the, this dense net will be this dense net uh, initial representations will be used uh, just as kind of a head start uh, so there are also other ideas where we could just uh, get out of this dense net in the initial layers uh, if we want to just capture uh, the uh, very low level representations uh, and we could go uh, inside this dense net in the deeper layer or we could just completely get out of this uh, dense net using all the representation all the complex representation of dense net so there are different ideas we could use depending on application to application then let's talk about the final idea which is grad came gradient classification activation maps these are used to interpret the results and in, and look at the convolution that what part of uh, image is actually uh, playing the role in the prediction so we could just interpret uh, that why the neural network is is showing the behavior that it is showing okay so how do we calculate it we choose a layer and a specific convolution that we want to visualize once we choose there and a specific convolution then we use gradient values to find out which part of image is responsible for the prediction and uh, this is what we will be doing once I'll show you you will uh, get a better feel for that uh, it's difficult to uh, make you understand here and I'll be making a separate video on these gradient classification activation maps uh, there I'll be explaining that part in a much more detail I hope so it makes sense now let me jump to the notebook and explain the coding part okay let's begin by importing the libraries and we are importing the Keras backend as K so don't get confused whenever you see K in the code okay then what we do is we load the data set and there is a description of uh, this whole data set so we have multi labels uh, it means for each image uh, there could be different diseases uh, there could uh, be for in each image we have one of the uh, one of, there could be like uh, multiple diseases in even one image so for example in this second image we have this i don't i cannot pronounce uh, this name so the pronunciation is actually very difficult but uh, this is one of the disease then effusion is this another disease and this infiltration is another disease and this is the idea of patient for which we are looking these diseases so this is how uh, we have stored the data then these are different labels and then we store the data in the float uh, form uh, the type of the 
uh, numbers should be floor 32 then data leakage is actually looking at uh, the patients if uh, they are in the training set as well as in the testing set so images uh, if they are in the training set they should not be in the testing set otherwise we are kind of cheating if you if i if i may say in the machine learning language okay then this is uh, just uh, looking at the code if we have written it right once that is right then we go and look at this train data frame again uh, and you could just explore uh, different diseases for different images but in my case i'll be just implementing uh, the whole classification problem then we will prepare the images but in preparation we don't want to store all the images in the ram because that will be very very memory uh, expensive so what we want to do is we want to load the data set on the fly from the directory uh, which, which is basically stored in the hard disk uh, and on the fly what we also want to do is we want to normalize it on the fly so each image this is what we call generator so while training uh, some of the images in different batch sizes will be uh, will be retrieved from the hard disk and while retrieving each of the image will be uh, will some processes like a normalization and kind of processes will be done uh, in on the fly and they will be fed to the neural network so this is for memory efficiency and we also write this function for test and validation data set once we have that then uh, we look at that data uh, so this is just getting the first item uh, this is like a first image uh, of uh, this is first x-ray image then the here is the main part model development first of all look at the uh, class imbalance problem so these are the frequencies first of all of each class uh, we are looking at different classes then uh, in this part uh, the whole explanation as i had already as i have already explained in the on the whiteboard uh, this problem and and solution of this problem so this is like computing the frequency uh, for frequency we just sum all the labels uh, for positive frequencies and for negative uh, frequencies we just uh, take uh, one minus positive because all of them should equal to uh, one okay then what we will do is we will look at this this graph where we have positive labels very less and negative labels very great for each of the class once we have that then we compute these weights as i have already explained and we look at the positive contribution and negative contribution just to see if that worked or not as i already explained we multiply this frequency of positive class with the positive weights once we do that uh, then we have basically solved this problem of uh, imbalance now once we have solved it so then we uh, we uh, use these weights uh, in this loss function as i already explained so this is uh, the weighted loss uh, in the weighted loss we have this uh, positive weights and these uh, negative weights for negative loss and we add, we, we add both positive and negative uh, loss and that will that will be our final loss so this is just implementation of this above formula this formula okay once we have computed this weighted loss then this code is just for testing whether we have done it right or not then we will use this dense net uh, for transfer learning you can go and look at the detail of dense net 121 the architecture is basically very difficult if you look at it i mean it's very uh, dense uh, this is a keras output for the architecture but let's visualize it this is the architecture where we have different skip connections you can just have a look at it that uh, of, and, and have a detail of this dense net but we will be using this dense net and this is very deep if you look at it this is very deep neural network okay then what we will do is after uh, having this uh, base model uh, we will uh, get the output of this base, base model and that will be our input and uh, then uh, using this input we will uh, we will uh, we will uh, define our own architecture in our own architecture initially we will uh, do pooling for this input uh, by input i mean the output of the dense net model and once we have pooling then we apply this dense net uh, dense layer uh, after uh, after this pooling layer and that will be our predictions and then we will define this model from head to tail uh, where we are saying that input is actually this base model input our dense net model input and the output is final prediction so just create a kind of graph uh, for this architecture uh, so it will include all the dense net layers and then the pooling layer and then our own uh, defined dense layer then we compile this model and loss uh, and for loss what we do is we are defining the our own loss where 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 i have just explained uh, which i have just explained here so this is this is what we will give as an input okay once done then what we will do is we will do training using this model dot fit uh, and after training we will just uh, predict and after prediction 
uh, we will evaluate using ROC curves and AUROC curves. I am expecting that you know about predictions of classification problems where we are looking at false positive ra rate and uh, true uh, positive rate. And for each of the class, we are calculating this ROC curve. So uh, the area mm, beneath this, this curve that we have just calculated uh, is actually the performance. The greater the area, so the better the performance is. Just go and have a look at this ROC curve. Uh, and in this ROC curve, generating this ROC curve, uh, we are basically using the scikit learn uh, it's scikit learn internal function we are not implementing this roc curve from scratch and in future videos uh, in, in machine learning utilities a playlist i will of course uh, talk about details uh, talk in detail about uh, precision and and recall and these roc curves and positive rates and false positive rates and their implementation from scratch so i'll, I'll be making those videos okay let's visualize learning with grad game i've already made a video and i'll be making this grad game detailed video uh, but for now just have a look at uh, this this minor and and slight uh, presentation and slight understanding uh, and a kind of a trailer of understanding of grad game what we do is we have this data uh, and given that data we load image this is the function for loading image. This is just for finding out like kind of mean and standard deviation for each of the batch. This is for normalization purposes. And these are some technical details that we have in TensorFlow uh, in, in neural networks and deep learning, uh, which I hope so, you know. OK, then what we do is we load image. Basically, uh, once we have loaded this image, then what we will do is we will predict using this this image and that image once we load it, that is in the preprocessed form. So this is how the predictions are for each of the class. Now come to this grad game part where we are having these uh, layers. So consider uh, we want to we want to visualize uh, this layer uh, BN, which we have called uh, this BN layer is of dense net and they have called it with the name of BN. So we are loading that layer uh, and we'll be using that layer. How will we load it? We will get that layer and uh, get that the output of that layer. Uh, and then we will uh, make another model where the input will be the model input. However, the output will be two. We will be generating two different outputs. One output will be this con output, which we want to visualize for this layer BN. And another output is the model output. Once we have this model output, uh, this layer output specifically, then we create the gradients for that and using those gradients and these are the gradient values and these are the output values for that layer. Well, these gradient values, uh, we call that weight uh, after after processing those gradient values. Uh, and these weights are uh, are, are like they are, they, they, there is a dot product between these weights and the output for that layer. Once we have that, then we get this uh, output in the form of a 10 comma 10 uh, matrix. Then uh, we just visualize this 10 comma 10 matrix and uh, the values of, of gradients, uh, the values of this dot product uh, where we are uh, dot, where, where, where we are having this dot product between this output a layer a layer output and these uh, these uh, gradients uh, what we are calling weights uh, we are just visualizing them uh, because the values are between 0 to 1 uh, so wherever their values are greater so those parts are red and wherever uh, the values are uh, are lesser uh, so those parts are blue uh, so in a way uh, these lower parts of the image are responsible for prediction here so this whole logic is captured is 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 kind of computed inside this function so this function is containing this whole logic where we are getting this layer and then for each layer we are just calculating this gradients and after gradients we are having this dot product and then for after dot product we are normalizing to have values between 0 and 1 and then we are just simply um, simply uh, plotting it okay so this is for this first layer where we are seeing the probability of 0 0.078 and and the and its respective gradient cam image so this is how we could see that which class it is uh, for which class uh, this uh, to which class this image actually belong and why it is belonging to that class. So this network is looking at which part of the images uh, and, and uh, which part of the image is actually contributing in this decision of associating this image to that specific class. So this is how uh, we visualize and interpret the result in the final. I know this grad, grad game might make uh, uh, might confuse you a bit, but the whole idea is really simple where we have to just compute the output and the gradients and uh, we have to then uh, take a dot product then normalize it and then visualize it it's as simple as it is and i'll be making a detailed video about it i hope so this whole process makes sense now